your ability to communicate is very limited by how fast you can talk and how fast you can type. Um, and what we're talking about is unlocking that potential uh, to enable you to communicate, uh, like I said, thousands, perhaps millions of times faster than is, is currently possible. This is an incredibly profound breakthrough. Uh, this, would, this would be a fundamental change to what it means to be a human. You know that feeling when you have that perfect idea in your head that you just can't quite express in words? Well, that struggle is not unique to you. And it's one that Neuralink will fix entirely. If you stick around for just the next 18 minutes, you'll understand the fundamental product that Neuralink is building. And once you grasp the concepts in this video fully, I can guarantee you your mind is going to run wild with ideas. You'll start to see all sorts of ways this device could get used. Let's start with this fun example. I just asked Rock to give me a specific word that expresses an extremely unique human emotion in a specific context. The word it gave me is iktsuarpok, the Inuit word for the restless anticipation and mild frustration of repeatedly checking if expected visitors have arrived yet, often leading to peeking out windows or doors in a specific context like waiting for friends or family during a gathering in a remote, harsh environment. Now I'm no psychic, but if I had to guess, this word lights you up with joy. It does the same for me. The reason is we subconsciously recognize that this detailed thought can be compressed down into a single word. It's just short of magic. And with AI progressing so rapidly, we're starting to experience a bigger problem. We each carry ideas inside our heads that are bigger than just words. We have entire mental movies, artistic creativity that gets lost when we try to actually put pen to paper. We have feelings so specific, they're impossible to pinpoint and compress down into language. There simply isn't a specific word like iktu or puck for each of our unique feelings. No matter how fast we type, how carefully we speak, something always gets lost. Humanity has been trapped in a bottleneck, and for the first time in history, someone is trying to break it wide open. When most people hear the name Neuralink, they think of a medical device, helping paralyzed patients walk, restoring vision to the blind. And those are real world-changing goals. But the fundamental product Neuralink is building isn't just medical, it's something deeper, a product that could redefine how humans think, talk, and connect, and even how we understand ourselves. And this summer, Elon Musk gave a clear description of what that product actually is. Uh, the reality is that there actually have been uh, limited brain-to-computer uh, interfaces for uh, several decades on a very basic basis. Uh, just what we're doing with Neuralink is dramatically increasing the bandwidth by um, many orders of magnitude. Did you catch that? The most important word here isn't medically focused. He didn't discuss a surgery or implants or medicine. The key word is bandwidth. What Neuralink is building is not just a chip in our skulls. It's a device that will expand the communication pathway between our biological brains to our digital devices. Right now, that pathway is as skinny as a straw trying to suck information from the ocean. Neuralink will expand it to be a communication superhighway, a giant fire hose, a way to move thoughts, not at the speed of talking or typing, but at the speed of our minds. To understand why that's revolutionary, you first have to realize just how slow humans really are at communicating. Take a day in your life. There are 86,400 seconds in a day. So if you talked nonstop from sunrise to sunset or typed every second you were awake, the total amount of information you output might hit 80 or 90,000 bits. That number could sound big until you realize that's about the same size as a single JPEG image one tiny picture. In other words, in a whole day of effort, your brain, the most complex structure in the known universe, manages to output about the same data as one grainy photo from the 1990s. This is the tragedy of human brilliance. Our minds run on supercomputers, but our mouths run on dial-up. Elon reiterates this here. So you can, you can it, uh, a human bandwidth out, output is less than one bit per second over the course of a day. So there's 86,400 seconds in a day. It's very rare for a person to do more than 86,400 bits of output per day. 
Uh, you'd have to be really talking a lot or typing all day, and you might exceed that. Elon's math checks out, and once you hear it, it's almost depressing. We live our entire lives limited by this bottleneck. Wars have been fought because leaders miscommunicated. Relationships end because words and language fail. Whole scientific breakthroughs have been delayed because one mind couldn't fully share what it saw. The bottleneck isn't always intelligence nor creativity. It's often merely bandwidth. And Neuralink's product is designed to remove this limiting factor. And we live in the most incredible time of technological development. This bandwidth constraint is being removed at the exact same time digital superintelligence is currently going through a big bang moment. We'll be able to interact so seamlessly with Grok version 20, or fine, maybe even ChatGPT version 20, that it will feel like it's truly a natural extension of our own brains. No more slowly thinking of your own prompt, typing it in, and then having to read the response. Even when we use a voice interface with AI models, it feels much faster. But imagine taking that to the next level and thinking of a prompt, AI spitting out the answer, and injecting it directly into your brain. But before we get to Elon, are you using AI to ask health questions in the middle of the night? Are you getting generic answers? Or even worse, a flood of confusing possibilities? Me too. Today's sponsor, Linkachart, an ultra-personalized health AI app, pulls together your medical records, lab tests, and data from wearables, then adds that context when you ask AI a question. Instead of vague advice, you get ultra-personalized answers, like what are the best supplements for you, what's worsening your back pain, or even how to improve your brain health. It makes your health questions easier, smarter, and personal. Do me a favor and click the link in the description to pre-order Linkachart for free. No credit card required. Thanks, and back to Elon. So what we're talking about here is, is going from maybe one bit per second to ultimately megabits and then gigabits per second. Um, and the ability to do conceptual, uh, consensual telepathy. From one bit to gigabits, that's the jump Elon is describing, a million times faster. Picture this, instead of struggling to describe your favorite memory, you could share it directly, like sending the full HD video from your mind to someone else's. Instead of compressing a revolutionary idea into a messy paragraph, you could transmit the entire concept, intact, into another brain. This isn't science fiction. Well, okay, it was, but for now, it's becoming a reality. It's the fundamental product Neuralink is aiming for, the world's first true, high-bandwidth, generalized brain interface that you or I could actually buy. It's truly the greatest invention in communication since the internet. And this leap isn't only about speed, it's also about clarity or fidelity. So when you're trying to communicate with somebody else, uh, you're actually trying to model their mind state um, and, and, and then take perhaps a, a quite a complex idea that you have, maybe even a, a complex image or, or scene or kind of mental video, and try to compress that into a few words or a few keystrokes. And it's necessarily going to be very lossy. Elon's right. It's lossy. So Neuralink's product isn't just about helping us talk faster. It's about letting us finally talk as accurately as possible, transmitting the full fidelity of thought. Imagine expressing your dreams in full detail. Now let's zoom out. Because this technology doesn't only matter for communication, but also for humanity. See, this device is helping us, number one, communicate more clearly with each other, both in terms of speed and clarity. But there's also number two, which is that it helps us communicate more clearly with our digital devices, like our computers our AI models, and in the near future, our robots. Because if Neuralink succeeds, it may be the only way for humanity to keep pace with the AI machines we've created. This is about survival, because the reality is we're already part machine. We are cyborgs. That may sound strange at first, but think about it. You've probably experienced it yourself. Leave your phone at home and something feels off. Not just inconvenient, almost like something's missing. Like you have missing limb syndrome. What does it mean to be a conscious creature? Um, we'll understand vastly more about the nature of consciousness as a result of this. And then ultimately, I think this helps mitigate the civilizational risk of artificial intelligence. As Elon has mentioned previously, we have three layers of thinking. The first is our limbic system, pure instinct, the ancient part of your brain keeping you alive. The second part is the cortex, which houses your ability to reason, imagine, plan, and dream. 
and the third. That's your digital layer, your phone, your computer, all the apps you use. The moment you check your calendar or ask AI for help or message someone across the world, you're using it. That's the part of your mind that's not in your head anymore. That's the whole reason anyone over 40 definitely knows all the local street names and anyone under 30 definitely does not. The young guns have outsourced that navigation to the digital brain layer that is always with them. But the tragic flaw of this layer is how painfully slow our communication with it is. The thing is, AI is accelerating fast. It's learning, adapting, expanding at speeds you and I simply cannot match with words and thumbs. If humanity's digital limb grows stronger while our interface to it remains weak, we lose control. The machines keep evolving and we get left behind. That's what Elon's warning us about. This is the core reason he started Neuralink in the first place. It's not that AI is inherently bad, but without an upgrade, we're simply too slow to participate in the future. Your phone is somewhat of an extension of yourself, as is your computer. So you, um, you already have this digital tertiary layer, but the bandwidth between your cortex and your digital tertiary layer is limited by speech and by, and by how fast you can move your fingers and how fast you can consume information visually. So, um, so it's, but I think it's actually very important for us to address that input-output bandwidth constraint in order for the collective will of humanity to match the will of artificial intelligence. When you think of Neuralink in this light, it's clear it's not just a cool tech product. It's not really about controlling your Tesla with your mind or even the magnificent enabling of helping paralyzed individuals walk. It's about giving the collective will of humanity the tools it needs to steer the ship. We humans need Neuralink to stay relevant and go along for the ride. Hence why Elon says Neuralink's mission statement is, if you can't beat them, join them. And while some view this AI decoupling with fear, people like Elon, and maybe even you, see an opportunity. Because the solution to this isn't fear. It's humans and machines working together. It's about true merging of man and machine. It's Neuralink shrinking the distance between your biological self and your digital self until they're one in the same. So again, zoom out even further to around 300,000 years ago, more or less when language was developed, and then 600 years ago when the printing press was invented. The radio helped broadcast messages 100 years ago, and then we got the internet 50 years ago. All these advances are accelerating, and as we're currently living through the AI explosion, Neuralink is the next product that will change humanity forever. And this leads to the next natural question. If Neuralink's clinic in Austin were open to you today, would you sign up to get one? The fortunate thing is that for now, you have some time to wait before you make a decision. The devices are being implanted in those with severe medical conditions. As such, their risk-reward trade-off is favorable even if there are still some real risks with going through the brain surgery. Which by the way, I should point out that on this channel, I've typically produced educational update videos about Neuralink's progress, but I've also had eye-opening, heartbreaking, and heartwarming conversations with five of the Neuralink patients. I highly encourage you to watch them. You'll get a real personal sense of the positive impact this team and technology are having. Going back to deciding whether you'd get a Neuralink or not, Right now, it might not be worth it, but between now and then when you do make a decision, the safety and efficacy of the device will continue to improve all along the way. The Neuralink team is working tirelessly to make sure the implants are as intuitive and useful as possible. So by the time able-bodied healthy people are really needing to make this decision, both sides of that risk-reward trade-off will have improved. And that's important because we all need to understand what's at stake. This is no longer a theoretical future. This is real. We are in the chapter of something historic. Neuralink will absolutely fundamentally change what it means to be human. Now, you might be wondering how Neuralink helps with medical applications. While the current patients have shown a higher bit rate, 10 bits per second, for using their computer cursor than me, 9 bits per second. In other words, the patients who are paralyzed and don't have the ability to move their arms are able to move a mouse around with only thinking and they can control that mouse cursor more effectively than I can. And this is just the very beginning. Within a few years, they'll be able to play video games way better than me. Think about shooting zombies as soon as you see them. No more lag between seeing them, telling your brain to fire, sending the signal to your finger, and then physically clicking. 
The implanted chip and tiny wires inserted into the brain tissue are able to read the electrical activity of the neurons and help them out. In the future, it's clear those who don't get a Neuralink will be left behind. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to learn more about Neuralink. If you subscribe now, you can forever say you were one of the first 100,000. And check out this video to stay informed. Thank you.